Let's talk about problem solving. I'm going to start off by giving you a couple of problems to solve. So let's start with this one. Look at the arrangement of the glasses below. By moving only one glass, you have to arrange the glasses so that the full and empty glasses alternate. Pause the video for a few seconds while you come up with a solution. Did you figure it out? The solution is actually pretty simple. In order to move only one glass, you just pick up this one here and you pour the contents into this one over here so that they will actually alternate between full and empty. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, how about this? Can you translate the following code? Again, pause the video for a few moments while you try to figure it out. Have you got it yet? Shall I put you out of your misery? Okay, here's the answer. Do you get it? Let's walk it through. Two Y's you are, two Y's you be. I see you are two Y's for me. <laughs> Let's move on. So what is a problem? Well, basically, a problem can be defined as an obstacle between a present state and a goal. And it's not immediately obvious how to get around the obstacle. So with those two examples I just gave you, um, the end point, the, uh, the goal, wasn't immediately ob obvious. And you had to try and figure out the solution. And that's what makes it a problem. You can have two different types of problems, a well-defined problem or an ill-defined problem. Well-defined problems have a correct answer. So there's one correct solution at the end. And by following certain procedures, you'll eventually get to that correct solution. Ill-defined problems, on the other hand, there is no one correct answer. And then the path to the solution is pretty unclear. So real life problems, um, for example, figuring out what you want to do with your life or changing your career or something like that, these are ill-defined problems. Um, there's no one correct goal point and you don't really know clearly how to get there. So they're, they're like everyday life problems. Well-defined problems, on the other hand, are the types of problems that are studied in cognitive psychology um, by making sure that we know what the initial and the end point are, then we can study how people think about these very well-defined problems. So the examples I'll be giving you here in the little next few slides are all examples of well-defined problems. Your book goes on to talk about how there are actually three types of problems. You can have arrangement problems, uh, those that deal with structure and those problems that deal with transformation. So we'll see here in a moment, arrangement problems type tend to be types of anagrams. Structure type problems um, involve trying to understand and represent the structure of an item in different ways. And then transformation problems start with an initial goal and an end goal and you have to transform it in the middle in order to get there. We'll get to those examples here in a second. So let's talk about arrangement problems. As I said before, you have to re rearrange the objects to form a new relation among them. So anagrams are typical arrangement problems. Try to solve this anagram. Have you got it yet? When we're trying to solve these arrangement problems, three things generally need to happen. First of all, we have to generate many different possibilities. So when you are trying to arrange the letters of this word, 
you might start looking at different combinations of letters. You might start thinking, oh, P O O L S, Pauls, mm, maybe not. Uh, loops, no. L O P S or S P. And you're starting to create lots of different possibilities and you discard those that seem um, unpromising. You also have to look at different solution patterns. Um, you have to start thinking about words from memory and how they might fit into this uh, anagram that you see before you. And you also have to start thinking about the uh, items that might constrain the search. For example, you might discard any kind of combinations that might have YY, because that's not a very uh, common combination in the English language. So what makes this particular word um, challenging to solve is the combination of some of the letters. The word is, if you haven't guessed it already, psychology. Most people don't think of the silent P and the S as starting the beginning of the word. So that can be challenging to come up with. And then there's lots of like the CH combination and the GY combination is also not particularly common. So that's why sometimes people might have issues with coming up with a solution to this anagram. But I've already told you the answer to this one. So here's another question. Here's another anagram for you and see if you can solve it. I'll uh, let you ponder on that one a while and then uh, let's move on to the next type of problem. Structure problems are about finding a solution among a fixed set of relations. So um, you have the structure of the problem that is set and perhaps you might have to start re -rep representing the structure in a different way in order to understand the solution. So for example, let's have a look at this circle problem. You have a circle that's divided into four quadrants and you can see that we know, and you can see the line X. And the question is, if we know that the length of the radius is R, then how do we determine the length of line X? Now probably some of you are thinking, oh, I don't do algebra, I don't get this stuff. But in fact, you don't, in order to solve this problem, you don't actually need to know any kind of math whatsoever. Take a moment to see if you can figure it out. Perhaps if I give you a little bit of a hint, maybe this will give you the solution. If I was to draw that little rectangle there. Again, I'm not going to give you the solution to this problem, but uh, just take a few moments to try and see if you can come up with the correct solution before we move on. Okay, lastly, let's talk about transformation problems. With these problems, they have an initial state and then an end goal state and a sequence of operations in the middle that change the initial state into the goal state. So for example, here's the stick problem. You have these 16 sticks arranged in this configuration and the operator is, you just have to move three of those sticks to make four equal sized, sorry, equal sized connecting squares and you have to use all 16 sticks. So you've been given the initial state, uh, you've been given the operators of what you have to do moving three sticks and you also have been provided with the end state, the goal state, making four equal size connecting squares. So do you think you can solve it? So that's where I'm going to leave you for right now. Have a look at those, um, the anagram problem that I gave you, the structure problem, the circle problem, and also lastly, that uh, transformation problem. And see if you can come up with a solution.